The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and welcome to the Thursday edition of the Box Score Breakdown here on HoopBall.com. I am Alan Sroki, joined by my fellow host, David Bracey again. David, how's it going? Alan, it's going pretty good, man. How's it hanging? It's going pretty well myself. Uh, like we were talking about right before hopping on air here, it's been a short week with a, an even shorter week coming up with Thanksgiving next week, uh, which will be pretty nice. Uh, of course, we will be hopping on a box score breakdown podcast that week. Is uh, actually, are there even games on Thanksgiving next week? I don't know how the no, NBA I'm does. Honestly, that. not sure. Yeah, it's a good question. Well, we why don't we we can leave it up as a surprise. Uh, if so, we'll be there that week, as we are every week, every Thursday for the entire NBA season. We have a very very small slate tonight, just two games, two TNT specials, and uh, this is not the slate TNT was hoping that they'd be signing up for when they got these two games tonight. No Damian Lillard, no Zion Williamson, no Aaron Baines, Ricky Rubio, <laughs> none, of, none of the stars that we've known. None of the stars. Known, none of the stars we know and love. Uh-uh. Uh, there was, oh, I mean, there's that Giannis guy, I guess, but besides him, uh, Oh, and that oh, and that Carmelo Anthony dude, I suppose too. That one was actually not expected. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy season so far. Um, I guess while we were, you know, it's going to be a light podcast. So just to make sure that everyone's up to speed on the things that happened today, we do have one topic we're going to dive into to before we hit the games. But before we even do that, I would be remiss if I did not. Get, tell you all about Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee. This podcast, like all of our shows on Hoop Ball, is brought to you by our title sponsor, Hawaiian Isle Kona Coffee Company. Check out their website at hawaiianisles.com. You can look them up on Amazon by searching for Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee, and you could also find them on Twitter at H I Kona Coffee. That's H I K O N A C O F F E E. Hawaiian Isles, get yourself a cup today. And now, the news that broke earlier in the day, Nikola Vucevic had to be helped off the floor in last night's game against the Raptors. He is got actually a couple of conflicting things out there. The initial report on him was that he's set to miss four weeks at least. That was reported by Shams Sharania of The Athletic. Uh, and a few hours later, uh, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN reported that he's set to be reevaluated in seven to ten days, which does not mean that's not an official timetable. That means they're going to reassess. So who knows what the timetable is with him? All we know is that he is out for at least the next week, maybe a couple more after that. So David, what do you see? How what's going to fall? Oh, oh, I should also mention Aaron Gordon also is out. There's no timetable on him either. He also has a hurt right ankle. The Magic are now missing two crucial parts of their front court. Where do you see the minutes going to these guys? Well, definitely, I think for those of us who were lucky enough to get a Jonathan Isaac share, um, let the breakout continue because I think he's going to soak up a lot of these minutes. They're really hurting in their front court. Um, outside of him, it's definitely looking like it's going to be a timeshare between a whole bunch of guys who I would say are pretty far from consistent as far as generating fantasy value, but Depending on the timeline with this injury, I mean, really anything could happen. Um, who, if you if you had to pick between the the three headed monster, that's the back. The, I'm sorry, the backup front court for Orlando right now. Where mm-hmm. would you where would you draw your draw your stake at? So I remember when the news broke uh, last night on Twitter, which you can follow me at at Alan Sroki. Um, I, I was thinking that uh, Kim Birch would probably be my pref- preferred option over Mo Bamba. Mostly just because I can't really get a read on what Mobamba's deal is in Orlando, which is not to say that you know there's something wrong with him. It's just that Orlando has not shown the confidence in him that you would expect them to show in their you know, top six pick from just a year ago. He just he's been on a minutes limit. 
he, he doesn't seem to have the full trust of the coaching staff. And it's worth noting that in the second half, Kim Birch, who has played very little this season, was the starter. Uh, he, he opened that second half. Uh, I don't have the minutes that he wound up with finishing at towards the end, but I'm pretty sure he and Bamba finished around the same mark. I, I don't really know if either of these guys are. I don't I, I'm going to say they're not. In, there's no ads in the standard league settings. If you're in a 12 teamer, uh, I'm not sure any of them are really worth it quite yet. I took a filer on Kim Birch in uh, one of my leagues just because I, well, there's a whole, it's a whole thing. I'm not, it's not going great for me in that one particular league and I'm just looking for an in, <laughs> but <laughs> um, Kim Birch, I think is my guy. He, he showed in limited minutes last season that he can be a, a, a low end source for field goal percentage and blocks. Um, so if he can crack 20 minutes a night, 24 minutes a night, you know, I think that he could definitely help out your team if they're lacking in that area. But I don't really know what else. I mean, what about you? Do you see some other between those two? Do you think there's anyone else on this team that could potentially get some uh, more run here? Uh, I definitely think uh, Al Farouk Aminu is going to get some more run. But again, I don't see a whole lot of fantasy value for him in a standard setting. Um, and definitely between the two, Abamba and Birch, I think you're right about Birch being the more preferable option. He got 21 minutes last night and mm. scored 12 points in him compared to Bamba, who had 16 minutes and only put up three points. Um, so, I mean, like you said, it definitely seems like they kind of have a preference and kind of an, a direction that they're going to be leaning in in the absence of Vucevic and Aaron Gordon for however long that is. Let's hope that Vucevic's absence is – is shorter than longer. Um, he has had some some ankle in- injuries in the past that have kind of kept him out of the lineup for extended periods of time. So I'm definitely wondering what's going to happen, especially as Orlando seems to be in a quick uh, kind of a quick race by themselves to the bottom of the Eastern Conference, especially after being in playoffs last year. So yeah, I, I, this is definitely a situation that is far from um, far from what you would want want to have happen, especially given where you drafted Vooch. I mean, that, that, that really hurts. So it, it definitely does. And it's, I mean, he was coming off a great season last year. I mean, obviously he finished in the top 10 in, in fantasy leagues. He played 80 games. Um, you know, he, he it's not like he's been a complete Ironman throughout his career, but you, you still hate to see him go down for this period of time. Luckily, well, I guess maybe I should say hopefully, because it doesn't seem like anyone's got a real read on it out there this won't be something that follows him for the rest of the season. He can get back out there, but yeah, I mean, I think it's hard to find a real pickup here. I think the biggest takeaway really is that Jonathan Isaac is like you, I think you mentioned is just, he is really going to have a huge load to shoulder here. I mean, he's going to be the number one guy in this front court. Um, They're really going to have to find more ways to utilize him offensively than they have this season. And he's been fantastic as the sort of, low end third option guy on the offense. It's going to be really interesting to see what his fantasy value is going to look like with these two out. I mean, he's never been the scorer, but he definitely has the talent to, to be a guy who can, who can really shoulder some part of this offense, whatever there is. And I don't know who else really gets involved. Maybe Markel Fultz starts taking more shots, but I'm not, I'm not confident there. Um, Absolutely. And I I agree with Isaac. And really, for the Magic, I think this is a make or break point for them in the season. And I hate to say that this early, but with all the rumors already swirling about them possibly uh, targeting DeRozan in a trade and them really hurting for the offensive generation, I mean, losing two guys like Vucevic and Gordon, as offensively erratic as Gordon can be, he's still somebody who can at least create his own shot um, to some extent, you could say. Mm-hmm. So, it's definitely going to be uh, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how Orlando kind of weathers the storm. Um, yeah, well, we'll t- we'll keep our eyes on that one uh, in yeah, summation here. If you're in a deep league and you lead, need some uh, center stats, if you're looking for a pickup here. Uh, I think we are recommending Kim Birch over Mo Bamba in this particular situation. And. If you have Jonathan Isaac, just let the good times roll because it's going to be a very interesting month for him. And uh, all right, so that's uh, that's the Orlando segment here on the Thursday box score breakdown. And now we're going to jump into our two games. First game of the night, Portland Trailblazers, Milwaukee Bucks, a high-scoring affair in Milwaukee. The Bucks eke it out 137 to 129. 
the uh, incredible Giannis Antetokounmpo was just, he filled the stat sheet tonight with 24 points, 19 rebounds, a career high, 15 assists, three steals, a block, and a three pointer. He shot nine of 27 from the field and five of 10 from the line. So you don't like that, but you love everything else naturally. And uh, the other big hitter from the Bucks on this one is Eric Bledsoe with a 30 point game, six assists, four rebounds, a steal, and two threes. He is now, through the month of November, ranked inside the top 35 in both nine cat and eight cat leagues. He has officially. Well, it's, he's been arrived, but he really has arrived now. This is the guy that people drafted. He is now playing at a level above his ADP, and he he really looks like he's got himself into form. And we have, uh, let's see here, what else we got on this roster here? We have Dante DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo? Di, I think that one, that last one was it. DiVincenzo. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Dante DiVincenzo, as a fill-in starter, has also been, for Chris Middleton, by the way, he has been very, very good, actually. He, he had 16 points uh, with six rebounds, an assist and a steal, a couple threes. He's really fit into the mold of this, te- of this team. He, he's athletic. He, he's quick. He, helps, he, he can keep up with the pace. He has been ranked, at, since taking over this starting role, he has been a top 64 player in nine category leagues and number 72 in eight cat. And I mean, is that going to keep up? Probably not. But it's very, very usable in all settings. He was just dropped in one of my leagues, actually. And not to tip my hat or anything or show my hand, but I'm definitely going to put a waiver claim out for him because I think that he is definitely a guy that I want on my team while uh, he, you know Chris Middleton's rehabbing. What else do you see from this, David? Yeah, I definitely agree with you about uh, David Chinzo. His... Uh... His per minute um, steal rate is is phenomenal, and it's definitely shown in the minutes that he's been given. He's definitely produced on the defensive end and otherwise. So I definitely took a flyer on him in every single league that I'm in that he was available, which fortunately for me was several of them. So I'm really liking that. Um, outside of outside of the uh, main ones that you went through tonight, I guess the only other one we can touch on would be Brooke Lopez. Got 30 minutes tonight, but only 10 points, so kind of quiet offensively. But I mean, with Giannis cranking out that kind of output he had tonight. I mean, makes sense. Everybody else seemed a little bit muted. And then you also had Bledsoe going crazy, as you said. And you mm-hmm. definitely love to see those two really clicking and humming early in the season like this. Um, that's looking strong for Milwaukee. But Brooke Lopez, um, as I said, only 10 points tonight. Uh, looks like only three re- or three assists, I'm sorry, no rebounds and two blocks and a steal. So we know Brooke Lopez has never really been uh, the best rebounding center in the NBA. Um, and I don't think that that's ever going to change. But you love that he's always going to provide you those block numbers. You love the fact that he also gave you two threes tonight. Um, so he he's definitely a guy who I think continues to fly under the radar in a lot of drafts. And he's somebody mm-hmm. who I really love to target in the middle of the rounds because I know he's going to produce, uh, you know, like really, really excellent value for me. He's going to be a key guy going down the stretch of the season when I need those peripheral stats. Yeah, totally. And he, you know, he, he started the year off pretty slow. He was a buy low candidate there for the first couple of weeks. And now he's, he's a top 40 guy, or at least he was heading into this game. Uh, that's going to be the case all season long. Yeah. And, you know, no rebounds, but the box out King still, uh, I think he, they all went to Giannis <laughs> tonight. Didn't get, I didn't get to catch this one, but I can certain looking at the, <laughs> just looking at the, the 19 versus the zero there. I think I can figure out what happened to Lopez's rebounds in that one. Um, yeah. And uh, I guess the other, other line that's sort of interesting here is Pat Connaughton. He had 18 points off the bench with four rebounds, two assists, and a two three-pointers. Uh, no real recommendations on that one. Uh, it's kind of been a different guy off the bench for Milwaukee in the wake of the Chris Middleton stuff with uh, Brown uh, being uh, – Sterling Brown being the guy that has probably benefited the most. But, you know. I've, I've always kind of liked Connaughton. I thought he was going to maybe be a guy that would be a little more consistent off of Milwaukee's bench this season, but we haven't quite seen that. It was a nice game for him, though. Um, but yeah, I think that wraps it up on the Milwaukee thing. Let's jump over to the Trailblazers, who are hemorrhaging right now. They are down so many guys. Uh, we mentioned at the top that Damian Lillard didn't play in this game. Neither did Hassan Whiteside. And... Basically, it was the C.J. McCollum and Carmelo Anthony show and Scalabissier 
show on offense. I, I, I want to start with McCollum, but I, I feel like I, I'm compelled to go with Scal Labissier's line here first. He had 28 minutes off the bench, 22 points, 12 rebounds, five blocks and a steal, two three-pointers and three assists. Um, wow. <laughs> uh, we've all we've seen like just ginormous games from Scal over the years. Never long. It, they've never been long lived. But when they happen, they are ridiculous. And this was one of them. Uh, we don't have a word on Hassan Whiteside's hip injury and how long it's going to keep him out. But if it keeps him shelved for, let's say, a week, let's say a couple of weeks, I think LaBCA is a guy that I want as a short-term pickup. Or I, I'm just because of the, there's just no one else. I mean, do you see any potential way that Scal LaBCA, if Hassan Whiteside's not on the floor... Do you think that Lobissia is going to see high 20s every night? I mean, I don't see how he can't. Yeah, absolutely. I would assume that they're going to force feed him minutes because outside of him, I I really don't know, like you said, who else they'd really be running out there. I mean, they're they're relying on Anthony Tolliver right now as their starting Ugh. center, so they're in a desperate situation. Yeah, it's really not pretty. Um, and, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't – this is not the scout Lobissia that you're going to get on every night, but – Look, if you got someone at the end of your bench that's giving you nothing, and you just need someone from tonight's slate of games to take a flyer on, I don't. You don't need me to tell you that this is the obvious guy to take that that look at. And I don't really know what to tell you and uh, to expect until we learn more. But good God, <laughs> that's a line. Um, why don't you? Uh, what what else from this Blazers team tonight uh, are you seeing? Well, in his in his glorious return to form, Carmelo Anthony tonight. 28 minutes, 18 points on 6 of 15 shooting, three three-pointers, seven rebounds, four assists, no defensive stats, and three turnovers. So, I mean, you know what you get. I mean, the Carmelo mm-hmm. Anthony, he will, he will put up the shots, and some nights they'll go in, some nights they won't. Fortunately, tonight was one where they went in. So you definitely like to see that um, in the deeper leagues where people took a, took a flyer on him, and in the points leagues where he took that gamble. It definitely paid off this evening. As you said, it definitely helps that Damian Lillard was out, that Hassan Whiteside was out, um, and that it was pretty much him and CJ McCollum running the show. So, mm-hmm. de- I mean, depending on how long this Damian Lillard situation lasts, because um, I believe he's, he's having back – is it back spasms? Yeah, it's back. It's something with his back. I believe it's back spasms. So, depending on how long that situation lasts, I mean, this, could, this, this show could continue, and I mean – for the people who picked up Melo, this could be a really good start. You could maybe even have an opportunity to really sell high on him if you have somebody in the league who thinks, oh, man, this is just this is Melo now, and he's going to be that 20-point-per-game scorer all season long. Because, uh, again, I, ju- I just really don't see that happening. Um, and then C.J. McCollum, as we said, the show was all about him tonight. 38 minutes and 37 points, uh, 15 and 29 from the field, hit five three-pointers, had six rebounds, 10 assists, and three blocks, surprisingly. So... CJ, uh, I think, is a guy who is sometimes overdrafted um, as far as where he is drafted. But when when Dame's out, I mean, this this is unquestionably his team. I think him and Damian Lillard have such similar skill sets that oftentimes they just kind of – their play just meshes in. You, CJ can kind of become lost in the shuffle. But on nights and night where he's a standalone, I mean, you really, really see why Portland's so adamant about keeping their backcourt together because, I mean, the guy can ball. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, he just sort of slots into Damian's to Damian Lillard's uh, role as the lead man pretty perfectly. Like you said, they have very similar stat sets, very similar games. I mean, CJ essentially operated as the point guard in this one and the shooting guard because uh, it's just uh, man, this Blazers team, man, it's, I feel so bad for them. I love I love oh, no. watch I love watching these guys in the playoffs. They're always just so fun. Damian Lillard and McCollum, just in their own rights, are such entertaining players to watch. But God, I mean, they have just been decimated this year from every which way. And really, starting last year with uh, Nurkic going down the way that he did, and it, this team is just unrecognizable uh, right now. I'm trying to see if there's anyone else on this team. You know, someone that's been interesting for the Blazers over the last few days, and I'm just going to start off here. I'm not recommending an ad here, but Nasir Little has uh, gone from playing no basketball 
to uh, playing a good deal of basketball for this team. And he, he's been scoring in double digits. Uh, I think he's, and he's been getting some getting involved in like, you know, with rebounding and just really wherever they can slot him in at any of those forward spots. I think he's overtaken his Zonia in the rotation. So that's something that's worth keeping an eye on. But he's not I don't think he's worth an ad. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's still just a wait and see kind of approach with Little, but definitely I think he's overtaking Zonia. I mean, 16 minutes for him tonight compared to Zonia's nine, and Zonia put up a straight goose egg across the board. So, I mean, definitely I think that Portland kind of has an incentive to kind of push that youth movement. So I think that they'll keep rolling with him. Yeah. And uh, I think that's everything we've got on this game. Anything else you have before we hop on to the next one? No, let's see what's going on in Phoenix. So we turn our attention to yeah the Phoenix New Orleans game. There's about nine minutes left, which is maybe a little bit more than we were thinking it was going to be. But you know there's enough here that we can start making some uh, start telling you guys what we're seeing from the lineups here. Uh, it's been we, why don't we start with the New Orleans side, which I mean we were just talking about a team decimated by injuries. These guys have been all over the map this year. They 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 had. I think about six guys on the injury report as of a few days ago, and they've gotten some of them back. Uh, Alonzo Ball, is this his first game back from injury? I believe it is. He, he's yeah. all yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He's coming off the bench right now. He's currently got 16 points through this fourth quarter, uh, or up until the eight minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. He has eight points, four assists, and a rebound. He's probably going to join rejoin the starting lineup pretty soon. But he, there is an argument to be made that JJ Redick. Um, it, you know, he, he's looked good. He's looked very good when he has been back in that starring role. He's like in the starting lineup now and they're relying heavily on his offense. He's got 14 shots through this game, which is second most on the team currently up at 26 points, four rebounds, two assists and a steal and five, three pointers. There is an argument to be made that he makes sense to stick around the starting lineup where maybe Lonzo ball could be the first guy off the bench because, you know, this three-guard rotation between Ball, Redick, and, and Holiday, it was tricky. It didn't seem like it was the, the perfect marriage to start the season. Uh, what, what do you make? Uh, what do you make of this? Do you see – I mean, it's, it's a tough one to break down, but do you, what do you think this guard rotation is going to look like when this team is fully up to health? Yeah, you know, that that's a really good question. I – I'm wondering if they're going to end up rolling with JJ in the starting lineup. I think um, I really think when Zion comes back, that having JJ in the starting lineup will just give them the spacing that they're really going to need um, to allow Zion to be as effective as they would like him to be. So I think that there's definitely some incentive, and it's definitely looking more and more probable. But the, the question is how, how they're going to approach the point guard situation with. Drew Holiday and Lonzo Ball when they have so much incentive, it feels, to play ball significant minutes. Mm-hmm. But you need Drew Holiday on the floor as that leader. Um, you know, Alvin Gentry's kind of really gotten on Drew Holiday's case over the past couple of weeks about how he wants him to take that incentive on the offensive end and otherwise to really get the team going. And since he has, I believe that they're they're four and two. Um, we'll see how tonight's game shakes out, but. So, I, I, it's, truthfully, it's it's definitely a situation to monitor. I think if I had J.J. Redick, I definitely would be holding. Um, I know in some leagues, I definitely saw that he was dropped a couple of weeks ago and has since been picked up. So, if you have him, I would definitely hold. And same with Ball. Just, I guess, just kind of take a wait-and-see approach. Yeah, I, I, it's definitely that case for me. I'm leaning, you know, I was very out on J.J. Redick to start the year because I thought that the – I mean, this is what it ended up being to start out the gate was that Lonzo was the starting point guard and Drew Holiday was primarily going to play shooting guard. But I, I think you nailed it that this team, when they get Zion back, a lot of the offense is probably going to play through him. And it's going to have a, it's going to be a lot better, probably a much more fluid game if you have a guy like J.J. Reddick spacing the floor to start those games off. And not to mention Brandon Ingram shooting the ball as well as he has. I mean, he adds another floor spacing dimension to the team. You add those two together, and then you can really have a dominant inside game with Zion, Derek Favors, whichever one you want to go with there. Um, so, yeah, I'm holding J.J. Redick. Um, I'm holding Lonzo Ball. And, yeah, this is going to be a wait and see on that one. That's going to be a very interesting battle to see play out, as long as these guys can all stay healthy at the same time. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. 
and another guy I mentioned, Derek Favors, he's he's also out. He's I think I saw something earlier today that he is probably going to miss at least the next two games, so we might see him back sometime next week. Uh, in the uh, interim, Jackson Hayes, the rookie, has been starting because also Jaleel Okafor has been out with an injury. So it's just kind of it's been really just Hayes and in Melly playing center for this team. Jackson Hayes now with just eight minutes left. He's got seven points, four rebounds, a steal, and a block. Um, you know, I was a little apprehensive about taking a, a look at him long term just because he strikes me as a guy who's very raw. But uh, he he has been – he really looks ahead of schedule from what a lot of scouts were saying about him during draft season. I mean, he, I mean he's got 5,000 in this game, so – that's definitely going to be a component. I mean, he's got to learn how to play defense in the NBA, as do many big-time shot blockers who come into the leagues, like Jaron Jackson, Wendell Carter Jr., Mitchell Robinson. All of those guys have been dealing with foul trouble. Hayes, probably the same case. But he, he is going to give you some defensive stats, pretty much any t- guaranteed he'll get you a couple if he gets 20 minutes a night, which is what he's seeing right now. So I think he's worth a short-term ad. What, what about you? What do you think about Hayes? Yeah, I definitely think he's worth a short-term ad, especially with the the whole injury situation with their front court, with Julio Okafor, with Derek Favors being in and out of the lineup. I definitely think that Derek Favors being in and out of the lineup is unfortunately going to be a season-long trend. Um, so I definitely think Jackson Hayes is more than worth the flyer because um, he's going to get the minutes. Yeah, and the way that this is going for this Pelicans team, it you know, we were kind of hoping that they'd be a playoff contending team, and there's still plenty of time for that. And, you know, it's not it's still early to say anything definitive, but the the way that the injuries have hit them this season, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if they're outside the playoffs and then they just go full tilt into the youth movement, which also benefits Hayes pretty good, especially seeing that he can hang. Is like you know, we're seeing early on that he's capable of hanging, so he 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 might have some playing time down the stretch. And uh, let's see, who else is worth talking about here? I've been big on uh, Kenny Hustle. I like Kenrick Williams. I like him a lot. Uh, he's been, he was one of my favorite streaming ads last season, and I've been streaming him in a couple of spots uh, with all these New Orleans injuries because he's kind of he's a do-it-all forward, and he's been getting over 30 minutes a night. Over the last five, six games, he's been seeing that 30-minute threshold. He's been a top 80 guy, which is definitely, uh, is definitely usable. Uh, I don't know how long that run's going to go for him, but, you know, he's not having the strongest game tonight. He's up to 2.7 boards and uh, two blocks, like the blocks, um, in 23 minutes. But he he really just doesn't hurt you anywhere, which is, I think, my favorite part of his game. He's just not going to score a lot. That's it. But, uh, and, you know, the free throws can be better. But aside from that, he, he gets you a lot of rebounds. He gets you a a handful of assists. He'll get you defensive stats, a three here and there. He's a great guy to, I think, stream if you haven't been already while all these minutes are opened up for him. And who knows? I mean, he's played well enough to at least think about giving him a larger role in the rotation once this team is all all the way up to speed. Yeah, uh, I I agree. And, yeah, I think that's uh, that's the Pelicans wrap on that one. Oh, I guess one last bit – Nikhail Alexander Walker, who had two really good games in a row, he's he he's been losing minutes to Etwan Moore and Frank Jackson with both of them back in the lineup tonight. I think he's only seen two minutes of game time. He's uh he's the kind of guy that you know with all the preseason hype, uh, I, I think you can forget about him until the second half of the season, where maybe we'll see some minutes open up for the younger guys. But yeah, that one's probably a little more predictable than the others. And uh, all right, so now let's hop over to the Phoenix side of things. We are now at the score is 113 to 107. We have five minutes and 45 seconds left in this fourth quarter. David, why don't you take the lead here? Yeah, so the, the, the main man tonight for the Phoenix Suns has been Kelly Oubre. I mean, 29 minutes, uh, 23 points, 6 of 14 from the field, had two threes so far, five rebounds, four assists, and only one turnover. Um, been playing great. Uber Uber has really been. I mean, he's terrific. They talked him up all preseason. Um, they were really really big on him last season, and you saw on the minutes that he got, um, he he really shined. And definitely, he looks like he's going to have a strong season for Phoenix. Uh, he's doing great on the on the wing, um, offensive wise, uh, and then on the defensive end, uh, really really great. I mean, I've been watching the game tonight, and 
he's taking charges. He's getting in passing lanes. You know, he's creating deflection. So you really love what Oubre's done. Uh, he's really developed his game since leaving Washington. And he's another one of those guys who can just really produce in a myriad of categories for you and not really hurt you anywhere. Um, so definitely love to see that. Yeah, he's been stellar all year long. And he was he, he really started to pick it up towards the end of the last season. Um, you, you, you could tell that he the, he's the start like the the lead scoring role really suits him. And I mean, they really they really needed him tonight with his slashing ability, being able to sort of mix it up. I'm sure that he's I, I haven't seen this game either, but I'm sure that he's part of a probably a big reason why Jackson Hayes might be in some foul trouble in this one. Maybe even Brandon Ingram as well, who's also dealing with five fouls. Uh, he he's just very an aggressive guy, really solid fantasy stat set uh, stat set all around. And I mean, I think that he's making a lot of people happy that they took him when they did because I think he's going to beat that ADP this season. Yeah, I absolutely do too. And uh, let's see, we mentioned no Ricky Rubio in this game. He's still dealing with the back issues. Uh, he managed to come back for one game, which I think was his last one, and he just didn't look right so they're gonna he's probably looking at a few games on the sidelines to get that all sorted out Uh, Tyler Johnson started a point for him tonight and he hasn't done much he's got four points four assists three rebounds a steal and a block and a three which you like and no turnovers in 25 minutes that's a usable line if not impressive I mean it's not impressive that's what I meant to say (laughs) but it is somewhat (laughs) it is somewhat usable um there's just so many point guards on this team. I think, like, I remember just in all the head scratching moves that Phoenix made this off season. I mean, it, they kind of like overcorrected their lack of point guard over the year, over the years by getting five. Uh, they have Elliot Kobo on this team, Javon Carter. Uh, they they uh, who else do they have here? I mean, I think it's just those three who are healthy right now, and they're all sort of. Um, they all sort of take from each other. Uh, Okobo has got 20 minutes in this one with 11 points and seven assists. Uh, I don't think that he's an intriguing ad. He, he's been pretty inconsistent through his first couple of seasons. I, I think that really, if you're looking for someone to pick up, it'd probably be Tyler Johnson in the short term. But that's just really until we know more about the severity of Ricky Rubio's back stuff. Um, you have any, uh, do you think, I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, that, that seems fair, right? Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you. I think out of the, out of those three, you're definitely going to want to roll with Tyler Johnson. Because, uh, I mean, Devin Booker's also doing a lot of ball handling as well. So you really can't rely on those guys who are coming deep off of the bench to really right. facilitate too much consistent playmaking. Yeah, and Tyler Johnson's definitely capable of operating as that off-ball guard. He, he can he, – the, the, combo, the combo role suits him well, which is probably another reason why he got the starting nod tonight. Um so yeah, and yeah, I'm not really thrilled about that one. He he can give you some. He can give you some some low end value. Probably better for Roto than head to head. And if he's available and you need the point and you need some low end point guard stats with uh, some threes and steal here and there, you can give him a shot for a little while. Uh, Aaron Baines is another guy who's out tonight, and now the Phoenix Suns are. They're, they're starting Frank Kaminsky at center. That was probably not something that they anticipated when they picked him up <laughs> over the offseason. But, you know, to Frank's credit, he's played pretty well this year. He looks really like he's fitting in with the offense. Um, not clear how long Baines is going to be out either with his hip issue. Uh, do you see a, a clear pickup with him sidelined? Um, I definitely think if if at all Frank Kaminsky is available in any leagues, he's definitely in that because um, he's going to be the one filling the majority of that timeshare uh, for for the time being. Because um, I mean, outside of Kaminsky, who, who who really do you think they would roll with? I mean, Sarge, I, w- I would assume at this point is is pretty owned in the majority mm-hmm. of leagues. Um, but if not, definitely. I mean, please correct that if for some reason he's sitting yeah. on your wire in your league. Yeah. Please, yeah, yeah correct you, that immediately. Make sure that's not happening. <laughs> but yeah, I think Kaminsky's going to get more run than Diallo. Uh, Diallo just really hasn't found a, a good landing spot for himself yet in the league, and uh-huh. I just don't think that this is going to be the year for him here in Phoenix, especially whenever Baines comes back and whenever DeAndre Ayton comes back, and it's just going to get r- crowded really, really quick. So if Kaminsky's there, grab him, roll with him. But other than that, I don't see a whole lot. Yeah, and I mean, I'm 
I, I knew that Frank Kaminsky is probably going to be the guy here just because you just look down this roster and they're, they're just out of options, frankly, to no fault of their own. They, they did a good job of sort of staffing up this offseason. Aaron Baines is a terrific backup center when Aaron, when Aiton, in, you know, in a theoretical, when you're in the pre- offseason making these moves, Aaron Baines makes sense. Uh, Frank Kaminsky makes sense for right now. I'm not thrilled with the efficiency issues that he's going to give you from the center spot, but he's definitely going to give you enough value to be worth starting. And yeah, I mean, it's the the rest of the Phoenix Suns. There's nothing that, I mean, I guess the other one player that's worth noting that could be still floating around your wire is McCall Bridges. He's up to 31 minutes in this ball game. He's had a pretty good one. He has 12 points, six rebounds, three assists and two steals with two fifty seven left to go in the game. Um, he, he's had a weird year, though, I think, especially with the emergence of Kelly Oubre. I think people were hoping that Bridges would maintain that consistent 25-minute roll, 28 maybe, on a good night. But he, he's just been all over the place. I like him for yeah. the, I like him for the defensive upside, but it's, he's just, it's too hard to trust him, even with all these injuries in Phoenix. Yeah, well, the wing spot. It's just such a log jam, and and definitely, like I said, with U- with Ubre really, I mean, asserting himself as the dominant forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's slim pickings. I definitely like Bridges more in Roto, just because of the fact that he, you know, you don't have to have him be consistent minutes wise every night because he. I mean, the defensive stats are total are very useful, and those are going to be a consistent for him. I just, I'm just not a fan of guys who I can't peg. Uh, I, I can't figure out their minute situation on a game to game basis. I mean, it's not even a matchup thing. It seems to be more of a flow thing with this with this team. It, he if he if he's got it going, he'll he'll be able to get some more. He'll be able to steal minutes away from some guys. Uh, it seems like he's just yeah. I think he's play, it looks like he's playing uh, over Dario Saric in this one, which also makes Saric a guy for me that can be a little frustrating at times. But like you said, he should be a guy that is owned in every setting while these uh, this injury situation is trying to figure itself out. Yeah, and, absolutely. All right. And I, I think that will do it for us. Uh, any closing thoughts on this game uh, before we, we call it a night here? Um, I do have a question for you. So I'm as I'm watching the game, Brandon Ingram, 23 points tonight, 10 in the quarter. Mm-hmm. Do we think that this is the new improved Brandon Ingram? So, yeah, I mean, I've been sort of on the fence with this one. I wasn't sure if I was willing to go all the way and uh, like, just say I think that he's arrived and I think this is him for real. It's hard to argue with what you've seen in a leading role. I, I think that he definitely fits the offensive scheme of Alvin Gentry's team better than he uh, did in any of the Luke Walton iterations of the Lakers. Uh, that he, he not only does the team seem to have a confidence in him, he seems to have a confidence in himself. Uh, he he just looks like he's taking better shots. It seems like he's hitting some of the shots that he was missing last year. I, I, I'm gonna go and say that this is for real. And the only apprehension that I have is to see what kind of role is left for him once all the Pelicans are back, particularly Zion. And Zion's just the biggest of wild cards here because you have no idea how much that this team's usage is gonna be thrown around with him involved. But Brandon Ingram, in my mind, has done enough to prove that he should be getting consistent looks in the offense. Um, and you, you, you mentioned uh, when we were talking about Drew Holiday earlier that he's got kind of a passive mentality. I know Gentry wants him to be more aggressive. But when the team's up to full speed, it wouldn't surprise me if Brandon Ingram maybe jumps Holiday for, uh, in terms of shot selections and shot attempts on this team. Yeah, I definitely agree with that point. And it's as a Drew Holiday owner, it is one that is in the back of my mind and raises more and more concern every day. Um, Because with with all the with all the Pelicans coming back and and their team health looming, um, it's going to be it's going to be a completely different show. And it's going to be very, very curious to see where the shots fall and how many of them do, um, depending on what lineup they roll out there. So definitely the Pelicans are big, just a great big old wait and see. Yeah, it's it's really tough to peg. But uh, uh, I guess the last bit would be, I mean, you have Brandon Ingram. You're seeing what he's giving you right now. And for the rec, by the way, he's up to 26 points in this ball game: eight rebounds, five assists, a steal, two blocks, and three three pointers with a, a minute and 25 to go. Do you just 
if you have Brandon Ingram and he is at this point where he's at right now, do you want to, are, are you going to stick with him or do you just sell him off and just, you don't want to deal with the mess. You don't want to know what happens when everyone's healthy on this team. You know, I personally, I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell. Um, if I can, if I, and again, it's going to be very dependent on, on the opportunity. Um, he, he carries, a, I'm unsure what his ranking is currently, but he's carrying a pretty high ranking. If you're able to get somebody, I think, who is in the top 20, top 30 guaranteed, mm-hmm. preferably top 25 lock, I, I definitely think that that's a move that you should make because I just don't see him continuing to shoot over 50% from the three-point line, which is what he's doing right now. And those percentages really, really inflate guys' rankings in nine-cat leagues. And once those start to taper off, as we've said, when there's more mouths to feed and less shot selection to go around them, that, yeah. that ranking is really going to dip. And I think the production-wise, I mean, definitely I think he can con- continue to do what he's been doing, continue to get the shots he's looking for, continue to be a very focal point on the offense. But the, the question is the volume and the efficiency. And I think both of those things are, are, are definitely, um, definitely going to be on the downturn here soon. Yeah, it, uh, um, for the record, he's number – heading into tonight's game, he was ranked 20th in Yahoo Leagues. Uh, with a shooting per- field goal percentage of 52% from the floor. He's averaging basically at one steal and one block a game, three turnovers. Uh, the 25 points are probably good, is more than likely. I mean, that's just not going to be sustainable once Zion's back in the fold. Um, and the shooting percentage is, I think, a very safe bet to come down by how much, I don't know. But yeah, it's. I, I think I, I'd be trying to sell too, just because he hasn't done this before. And if I can get a guy that's guaranteed top 20 value, uh, that like he's done it before, let's, I don't know, say Kimba Walker. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I might feel, I might feel a little more confident rolling with him for the rest of the year than whatever's going to go happen here. Would you trade Ingram for Drew Holiday? Ooh, <laughs> uh, man, I, I feel like we're just, I'm just, I'm taking mystery box and trading him for another mystery box. there. <laughs> Yeah. I agree. I agree. So I, I, I think if I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to go with that one. Uh, but yeah, Drew Holiday is another interesting guy. Um, just, yeah, there's just so many interesting potential trade candidates you can have with this team with all the question marks up in the air. Holiday's, I think, going to finish the year well above his 45 ranking that he's currently at. Um, well, I mean, maybe not well, but I should change my language there. I mean, I think he could finish in the top 30. But maybe 45 is also where he settles in with all the usage going around. It's just tough, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I think if, if I've got some of these marquee Pelicans, I, I'd be more inclined to look for trades. Absolutely. All right. And with that, we take we, we uh, there was a nice deep dive on those four teams there. We, we, we got a show out of this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. David, where can the people give you a follow? Uh, give me a follow on Twitter at DFB underscore three. Um, DM me, hit me up, send me all your fantasy questions. Love to help. Absolutely. And you guys can follow me on Twitter as well at Alan Sorokie. That's A-L-A-N-S-R-O-C-H-I. Any questions you guys have at any time, I will try and answer them as quickly as I can. I've loved the response that I've got from some of you already on there. And Honestly, anything, any question, any, whatever you feel about it, send it my way. I'd love to help out. And that's going to do it for us. Have a happy Thursday, everyone. We will maybe see you on Thanksgiving. I think we might. Until then, have a good one. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.